the enlist loan, we're big enough to enlist on an exchange, and they'll file a prospectus with the SEC, take them three to six months, a ton of money, right? And if they're lucky, it will make it through that they'll find a brokerage firm that will actually sponsor them and take the company public. And that whole process can be three to five years from investment. So the people who invest in C rounds and in Series A and B, their money's at risk for a very, very long time. And unless the deal actually works to some degree, it never goes public. There's no exit ramp out. Everyone follow me on that? Yet they still make money VCs. Why? Because when they get a big winner, it's so big that it offsets the losers. When you invest in VC, I was in VC for many, many years, you're looking to do 10 deals, one's gonna blow out and make you super, super massive amounts of money. A couple of them will do okay to make a little bit and there are other six or seven fucking zeros. But that doesn't happen in the world of cryptocurrency. Why? Because every deal gets floated publicly. Every single one, for better or worse. That's a dangerous thing for people buying in the aftermarket, but an incredibly amazing thing for those getting involved in seed rounds and series A and B. Because it's de-risked. Because no matter how badly the company is doing, seriously, God's on the street. No matter how inept the management might be, no matter how stupid the idea turned out to be, many ideas look great on paper and they just don't pan out in the real world. And that's typically what happens with DC. It's not bad intentions. It's a combination of mismanagement. Almost everyone has good intentions when they, they raise money. Most people do. It's a combination of mismanagement and it just didn't work out what seemed smart on paper, for whatever reason, didn't play out in the real world. And because of that, only one deal out of many will actually ever go public. And then of those, even those only one will really hit it big. But still, these funds can return 20, 30, 40% a year. Guess what a VC fund in crypto returns? 400% a year, 600. Those, if you go to some of these better funds out there in crypto, their returns are so staggeringly high. Why? Because they make money on the losers, too. They make money on the losers. Because they all can be floated either on a DeFi exchange, and you know what they can get anyone here, at least on an exchange and decentralized, right? And then the better ones will at least get up to a point based on a cracking or one of the other many centralized exchanges. Well, the barrier to entry is very low. Compared to what you need to do to get a, a traditional company public, it's like apples, it's like honestly, it's apples and oranges. So what does that mean for you sitting in this room? What it means is I better get in when? Early. The key to making money, tell you flat out, the key to making money at this game is to get in very early. To get either in on C rounds, Series A. If you're getting it, I was out to dinner with the, the most successful crypto investor in the world. The most of one. The biggest fund out there, the most successful, person, he was the guy that backed Ethereum, the, uh, the 22 cents or some crazy number like that, put tens of millions into it, right? Just imagine how many billions he made on that. He was one of the earliest people to support Bitcoin. We were out for dinner, and what he said to me, and it didn't resonate so much at the time, he goes, yeah, it's just fucking simple, just get involved in every seed round of the better deals. So if you know anything about the deals, that I can even analyze and I don't have to be a genius here, and just get involved in a seed round or that round just right after, it's kind of hard to fucking lose. The people who lose at this are the people who are going out there and looking at what's being said on TikTok and all these other places, and you're buying in the aftermarket after it's up 10,000 times, or at least 20 times, and you're getting fucking buried. That or you're buying the bigger, more established coins and tokens 
like a Bitcoin, like an Ethereum or a Solana, but I would look at Bitcoin and Ethereum in sort of one category and then all the others, that's just me, that's how I look at it, all the others separately. Or you're buying those and either A, buying and using leverage and getting wiped out with the volatility, which will be here for a long time still. Right now, Bitcoin does not trade like a currency, it trades like a growth stock. Remember that. Bitcoin trades like a highly speculative growth stock. Wild fluctuations up and down. You cannot use leverage on those positions. If you use leverage, you will get destroyed almost every time. You just get a massive war chest of cash behind you to keep up with your market calls and so forth. Yeah, you can get low, you can leverage just catch your eyes, but over time you're getting wiped out. If you're out there listening to the latest tip that your Uber driver gave you or your friend gave you, 99 out of 100 times you're going to be wrong. And you're going to lose your money. The key to this game, the whole thing, in a negative way, because I'm very bullish on Bitcoin, man. So I own, just you know, personally, a tremendous amount of Bitcoin now. And of all the Bitcoins I ever had, Since everything I ever after I lost the bet by the Beatles, I lost the fucking bet. By the way, he was very humble and he gave me a Bitcoin at 10,000. My lowest execution was around 10,000. I bet the Bitcoin was under 10,000 at the end of that year when it was, I forgot what year it was, it got destroyed. It was at 17,000, right? I lost the bet. Right? But he was very nice and gave me a Bitcoin. So my lowest execution was around 10,000. I bought many, 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 a lot of them. And how many I've sold so far? Who wants to guess? Zero. Zero. I never sold a Bitcoin. I own about 10 times as much Ethereum as I own Bitcoin. I don't want to fuck Bitcoin. I own 10 times as much Ethereum. My lowest execution, 2,000. My highest one, 5,000, whatever. Guess how many Ethereum I sold? How many? Zero. Let me give you an analogy. To me, I look at Bitcoin as like the S&P 500 of cryptocurrency. You get it? It's like, it's like the index of crypto, the S&P. And if you invest in the stock market, and wanna, who invests in the stock market? Let me save you some time. Stop investing in the stock market. Just buy the fucking S&P and hold it and reinvest the dividends. You're never gonna beat the S&P. You, if you just do that, as crazy as this sounds, you just buy the S&P and hold it and reinvest your dividends, over 20 or 30 years, you're gonna be out 99% of all the funds who are promised you this and that and charge you two and 20, and you two percent that and 20% of all the profits that or whatever they make, right? You're gonna be out 98, 99% and the 2% you couldn't be out for funds you could have never put your money in because they were closed to people like you. They're not open to the public. It's been proven mathematically if you ask Warren Buffett or any major investor, what's your, what's your, just put your money in the fucking s and and hold it. To me, the equivalent of that is Bitcoin in cryptocurrency. The problem with that strategy is it's boring. It's boring. And I don't know about you, I can't resist the temptation of investing in other shit as well. Even though I know that at the end of the day, probably my best bet's gonna be just to hold Bitcoin and it's to the long term. There's an old saying on Wall Street, bulls make money, bears make money, pigs get slaughtered. You can make money when things are going up, you can make money when things are going down, right? But the idea is you want to get in at the end of the beginning and get out at the beginning of the end. It's hard to bottom tip, hard to top tip. Now, in Bitcoin, at this moment, it's a bit strange. You can actually, if you're in the right Network, if you know the right people, you can actually bottom tick a lot of these deals by getting involved in C rounds or Series A. So I would urge you, if you really want to get into this industry now, those are going to be your safest bets by far. Getting in on Series, 
on either your, your C rounds and your Series A, and then the single most important thing to look at in any deal is gonna be what? Who wants to guess? The people behind the deal. I don't care what the idea is, I'd rather be a better idea versus a worse idea, and not be totally stupid and ridiculous, but I will tell you this, if someone with an impeccable track record and great credentials comes to me and I hate the idea, I will invest in them every single time. If they're, tri if they're top notch operators with a great track record, I'll give them money every single time, even if I think the idea is stupid. Because either I'm wrong and it'll be a good idea, or they'll fly that through up and they'll pivot to a new idea. But I'm protected, why? Because no matter how bad the idea is, it's still gonna go pivot. The equivalent of it's going to be publicly listed on a DeFi exchange. You're always going to get liquidity with this stuff. You always get liquidity. Does everyone get this? I can't stress this enough for you. The game, the way to get in to really make money is you get into these early rounds. And it's all about access. That's the key. Who you know, getting into the round, there's networks of people out there that are constantly flowing deals, and once you're in them, that's when you can really make the most money. If you're gonna be investing your money in established coins, I will tell you one thing, one little trick here. Let time do the heavy lifting for you. Let time do the heavy lifting. Meaning, if you Get involved in Bitcoin today. I don't know where it's going to be in a week from now. I honestly don't know. I don't know where it's going to be in three months from now. I don't, I don't know where it's going to be in a year from now. But I suspect as we start approaching a year with two years and three years, I suspect strongly, in fact, incredibly strongly, that it's going to be substantially higher. Just where, I don't know. But I believe in my fucking liver and loins, my heart and soul, every fiber of my being, that Bitcoin is going to be higher. Why? Because simply on adoption, you look at the adoption, the global adoption of Bitcoin right now. And you look at that and you use the internet or any other paradigm of adoption going back in history, you'll see that it seems pretty difficult here that if you have a finite supply that by its very nature is sticky, that once people buy it, they don't really tend to sell it, and you increase adoption, what do you think happens over the long term? It probably is going to go higher. Combine that with the level of institutional adoption that we see happening now, and by the way, regulation is right around the corner, and if you're scared of that, I would say to you this, don't be scared. In fact, I think regulation is not only necessary, but it's gonna be a great thing for Bitcoin and everything else. One of the reasons why institutional adoption is still relatively low, one of the reasons why institutional adoption is still relatively low is because there's no regulation. So all the big money out there, the institutional money, is either just barely dipping their toe in the water right now, but they're still out because they have restrictive covenants in their corporate charters, barring them from getting involved in unregulated industries. There's just no way they can do it. But there's an old saying on Wall Street, institutional money is usually smart money, and even when it's not, it's enough to fuel the market anyway, right? Well, guess what? Once regulation comes in and institutions get bored at all these institutions and have been sitting on the sidelines, can now at least dip their toes in order to buy inside, what do you think is going to happen to the price of Bitcoin? Probably going to go higher. Again, no guarantees. And I'm not the game by telling you to buy or sell Bitcoin. I'm just, you know, <laughs> like I don't know some so self-interest telling you what I think for myself, and I would just think it's good advice for you. Based on everything I see and know about the market, about human nature, about economics, I, I just don't see a scenario at this point where Bitcoin goes away. I don't see it, I don't see it's possible anymore. And when you take away that sovereign risk, I, I just think it's, I think it's, I wouldn't know if it's blue skies is the right word, but it just, it has to, I don't know, I can't see a scenario where in three to five years, it's lower. But who knows? 
Nothing is guaranteed. I would urge every one of you here that if you're just dipping your toe, getting started, start with Bitcoin. You start with the big stuff. Start with Bitcoin, start with Ethereum, and just get in and just watch it. But when you buy, buy with what you know you're going to put away for at least a couple of years. Don't be a speculator. Don't speculate in these coins. It's very difficult. You have to be such a professional, so fine your game. I don't lose much. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a much time all day long to watch this shit. I don't want to. So by letting time do the head lifting, meaning just time alone will allow the fundamentals and the adoption curve and regulation and impact that's going to have positively, I believe, on Bitcoin and Ethereum as well. I think you really almost can't go wrong, but again, no guarantees. That is a one book word here, and I want to open this up to a QA. and I want to give you guys a few minutes to ask some questions to make that it will be really helpful. One thing about Ethereum, why am I going to Ethereum? Well, one specific reason. Ethereum this year, and it's going to be this year unless something goes really wrong again, is going to make a fundamental switch in how the whole system works. It's going to go from proof of work, it's going away from proof of work, which is a very energy intensive, expensive proposition that is not good for the environment, they say. Whether you believe it or not, it's your own belief system, right? They're switching to what's called proof of stake. Proof of work, just very quick explanation. Proof of work means that you have computers competing against each other, doing these really incredibly complex calculations, solving problems that are really, 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 really hard to solve. They take a lot of computing power. But once they're solved, it's very easy to very expensive to verify. Hard to expensive to solve, easy to verify. So that makes it very difficult for fraud to happen because it's, it's almost cost prohibitive to commit fraud because it's too cheap for everyone to check your work and see if it's real or not. So you really can't commit fraud with Bitcoin because it's very difficult. It's not, it doesn't matter why, it just is, trust me. But that switch from proof of work to proof of stake, which is where bigger places put up their stake, they guarantee the, the transaction through ownership of large amounts of, of, of Ethereum. That is going to dramatically bring down the cost of the entire network, which will eliminate basically almost in its entirety the zone death, meaning the, the fees you have to pay to use the network. That's what's holding, it's almost the, it's the equivalent of what? That's what I saw all saying. Slow development on the internet. You can look at the same, I saw saying, when I looked at the internet, and ah, the damage that you committed to get a page up in a picture. Look at this as the same thing as slowing down the network, right? Making it really unusable in a commercial way, a large way. So you can't do enough transactions, the system gets shut down, it's too expensive, it slows down and costs you eight dollars to buy a cheeseburger, not going to work for it, right? When they make this switch to proof of stake, it's going to pave the way for, I don't even know what, but it brings down the cost of the system so much, who knows what human ingenuity is going to come up with. That's why right now everyone is building their applications on top of Ethereum. So I, to me, given that is one event, I think Bitcoin is pretty much Bitcoin right now. I don't see a lot of fundamental changes happening to Bitcoin. Maybe it'll be some, I don't see a lot happening so soon, right? Nothing on the horizon. With Ethereum, I see a near-term event that's gonna fundamentally make Ethereum much more valuable, much more usable. And I think that in this whole entire world of de decentralized finance, generally touch on is a more complex conversation, DeFi, NFTs, met all these things that you connect up next to the metaverse are all gonna become realities because the money that it costs, which makes it cost right now, will disappear. And I think it's going to be a massive boom after that. That's why I have more of Ethereum than a Bitcoin. I'm pretty much out of time because I want to have a little bit of Q&A here. One thing I want to mention, by the way, is I do, like myself, I do a bit mastermind events where I have people come to my home, it's a private thing in my home, actually with my address. I have a beautiful mirror and I have 
about 10, 10, 11 people in my house, all right? So if anybody here is interested by one coming up in about a week or so, okay? Um, and I'll tell you why, what we do. A, we do a lot, some education, but really it's about access. Because once you're in that, I, don't, I see a million deals. I have unlimited access to like CD rounds and Series A, so you're involved in that, you're looking for the next year, everything I do, I'll just say, hey, you want to invest in this? You can. If you don't want to, don't. So it gives you access to great deals, to a network of people that really know what they're doing. I'm gonna have a few really great guest speakers come to my house, and some industry leaders in my house. So if anybody's interested in attending that, it's not for beginners. It's more from people that are so successful behind them because it's you know it's, it's not a crowd of crypto experts. It's a crowd of people that really are in crypto that want to really take it to the next level and also want to start learning how to invest in these seed rounds and series A's. That's where the real money is, guys, is getting in before the stuff floats on the exchanges. Because once it floats on the exchange, it literally it's, you just don't know. I, and I invest in that too, by the way, but much less money. I throw a jump, I hundred grand here, and it's all like boom, 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 just take shots in the dark. And you know, my friend, my friend right there, like, like, like Adam, right? Like when you're being focused, it's like a horse that we met on the track. I threw hundred thousand dollars into some deal in December, I made over a billion bucks right now. Right? But I wouldn't tell you to buy it, because it's I want to lose one, right? But those are like the joke fun deals we do as well. But the real great stuff is the private deals. So anyone's interested, in that side, I think you have a slide there, Matt, to put it up for a little code, whatever. Well, right there, there it is. You just put your phone on that thing. Or where's Matt? You can just talk to Matt. Where's Matt? My guy Matt. Is he around here somewhere? Where's Matt? Where's Matt? Matt left? There he is. That's Matt. Anyone who wants to, you can just talk to Matt directly when I'm done. Okay? And it, it, it would probably be a life changing experience for anyone that attends. That much I can promise you. Now, with that, I want to open this up to a QA. So, who's got a question to ask me? Let's keep it to crypto. Don't ask me about how to sit the fucking guy. Let's see. Keep it on crypto for today and venomous. Okay, man right there to start. Right there, like this. See that? There's a man right there raised his hand. I saw him first. What's up? Doesn't work. Okay, why don't you stay? All right, I If you have a project right now that's already floated, it's already out there, the coin's out there? Uh, the coin is in the project live, and we just got our MVP last night. <laughs> well, I mean, number one, you know, this, it's very easy to get on these DeFi exchanges. You just go onto the DeFi, you go on Pancake Swap, you get it, it's pretty simple to do. It's like there's no real barrier to entry there, so that's how you start. But I would also hire a crypto PR firm to help you. And the best way to get yourself out there, if you're not an expert in crypto marketing, you are probably be a lot better off bringing a really good crypto marketing firm to help you get some exposure. Also then, try to get onto you know, one of the listed exchanges, like Coinbase, uh, Gate.io, um, Kraken. Once you get on there, you have a much, much wider, less barrier to edge. Some people just don't understand the DeFi part of the rules. But that's the best thing to do, get onto those DeFi exchanges to start. And then also, why are businesses? Crypto PR. Is, is very powerful. You can really get the message out there. And also influencers, if they're the right influencers, like getting a couple of influencers behind your, your stuff, can work well. Be very careful with that. I'm very careful. I, I have a lot of battery energy before, and my friends know before I'll put my name on something, I'm like, I'm fucking paid in the ass because you know, my name is my brand. But if you can find an influencer to do that, it will work well. Awesome. Alright? Thank you. Okay. Alright, we here. Can someone raise their hand? Who raise their hand up front here? Someone? I do. I'm not writing notes. I'm not. I don't do that. Okay. I I I I'm serious about that. No, I'm not writing notes. I'll tell you a terribly awful story. In 2013, someone approached me to start mining Bitcoin, and I said no. Oh fuck! What a miss that was, huh? I you want me to? Someone from Australia wanted me to start a Bitcoin mining operation. Here's what I just personally think. I have friends. Depending on where you live, you know Argentina, the government subsidizes the power. So their cost of power is so cheap, he's actually mining Ethereum out of his actual house. And he makes a lot of money. It's like out of his house, believe it or not, Ethereum. Bitcoin's out of that's too difficult to explain Bitcoin. It's just it's so expensive. The battery and entry to mine Bitcoin is you're competing against people with huge farms and so on. You can still do it with Ethereum. 
What do you know is, is not actually mine, but to me, I don't, honestly, I don't play in that domain. So I really, I really want to tell you don't do it, but to me, the, the big money is not being made like that. I'm not saying you can't make some money doing that, but the real, I'm telling you where the money is, I promise you. Early stage deals, until they change the law, and then you can't just float everything, it's like, it's like honestly, it's like investors Disneyland. That's what it's like. Because, do you understand know, the difference in the stock market? The company has to actually work and get traction for you to win. In this market, it has nothing to do with that. Just get it early and it floats and you get out. Now you have some lockup, but typically this number one, you can do some, you can get rid of some either way, you win a lockup while they can sell it at a discount. But also, you'll have some that gets unlocked and then you can start selling over time. So I think that to me is a far better way, but there's nothing wrong with that. I would say don't do it. Next question. So I think there's a bit of a disconnect between mining and nodes. No, there's different things, so, yeah. Yeah, if we're looking at nodes as a passive income to build generational wealth, how would you feel about getting in early to those ones that you mentioned? So again, as I, as I said to you, I said this, that most nodes is different, right? Mining nodes is just a confirming transactions, right? And you're on the network, just all watching on your computer and you're confirming transactions. I don't, I don't, I don't know enough about that to really give an accurate answer. I don't do that. And, I, and as I said, like, I don't get the real money intuitively. I don't know. Intuitively, the microphone should have heard that. Intuitively, I don't think there's that much money in that. So for someone like me, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't move my needle enough. But I'm not saying it might not be good for a small investor. You should check that out. I'll do some research on it, though. So, you know. I, I check out the other game. Yeah. Next uh, question, we have someone right here. You can go first for a second. Yeah. Hi, Jordan. Thanks for your speech. It's very good to learn me. It's amazing, like always. I was in Abu Dhabi. I <laughs> uh, remember. Uh, so, uh, what I want to ask you is uh, about investment. I'm really interested to be part of your VC. Um, I would like to know about your strategy on VC. So, which kind of sector do you see, let's say, for the next investment in the future? VC for. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's all about the fund. So, the fund. So, yeah, I think that, okay, so number one, my, rather than looking at this as a sector, the single most important thing is who is behind the deal. Just try to have a really compelling idea that's really just groundbreaking, a bunch of morons that have no experience, they will fuck it up 100% of the time. And then someone will pick up the and just copy it and you're done. So I would really, really focus on the team behind the deal, the advisors to the company, or very important the advisors are to the company, because the advisors, like I open doors to people. Like if you have me on your board as an advisor, yeah, but it's not that I'm gonna get people buy because I'm gonna will, but that's the least of it. It's the doors that you can open to actually help you raise money, build your business, get talented people in. That's a huge thing. If you want to know my opinion on sectors, what I would, I personally am, am really, really high right now on the play to earn gaming industry. I love, I, I just love that model. I think it's going to revolutionize video gaming and play. And, you know, I'm, I'm on so many, I own stakes state, in two video game companies that are not crypto, but they're, they're public companies, by the way, that are involved in, in old style gaming without. And I, I'm two of them, they're both public. One's public, one's about to go public on the NASDAQ, right? I've never seen more engagement, higher engagement than in video games. It's, it's shocking. It's shocking. And what Axie Infinity, who knows about Axie Infinity, they cracked the code, the first people to crack the code on this play to earn model. So I believe that's a fundamental paradigm shift in video games. And I believe that in the next three to five years, you're going to see every game out there switching to this model with NFTs and the players having ownership. The old style, that old centric to where the company makes all the money, I think it's going to shift. And you're going to see players making more money, people staking NFTs making more money. I think this is the tip of the tip of the iceberg. So I love ideas of gaming in the metaverse. I think it's a great place. 
Also, any layer or new layer one solutions. I'm always open to looking at layer one solutions that actually happen, like where they're laying down the railroad track versus hopping on an Ethereum railroad track and being a boxcar. So sometimes, occasionally, you see these new ones, like Solana was one of those, or like or Terra Luna, right? You see the really interesting new ideas. Those are always great too. But again, it's like, it's a, if the players are really solid behind the deal, it could be the dumbest idea in the world, and you'll still make money with it right now. Obviously, you want the better deals, of course. Why wouldn't you, right? But I'm just telling you, that's the way it is right now. Next question, who's you? Yeah.
But then you can have other situations like Apple, iPhone, Android. So iPhone, Android, two huge worlds that both coexist. I would look at Apple slash iPhone as being the centralized solution, where everything is on the one roof, the centralized solution owned and controlled by Apple, which gives you some advantages, and the decentralized solution is more like Android, where it's open source, anyone can use it, make their own phones. So, not surprising, there's more people using Android collectively than Apple. Apple is the probably the premier one, but there's many more people. But they exist side by side. One doesn't replace the other, but there's need to have both. I believe that you will not see crypto or Bitcoin or Ethereum, anything replacing sovereign money, like dollars or euros. I believe you're going to have them running side by side. So you're always going to have the centralized national currency. They might be digital currencies, but they be centralized by the government. And you're going to have these on-ramps and off-ramps, as you see happening right now, where you're going to have a heavily KYC, know your customer situation, where you want to put your money back into the centralized solutions. And you're going to have the DeFi solutions out there running side by side with not as much disclosure required, but probably more than there is today. Ultimately, I believe DeFi becomes much bigger than the centralized. Like, I think it represents Android. So probably be more ultimately DeFi, so we're just getting started with DeFi right now. And then you'll have your centralized dollars. I don't think one will place the others. And then you have stable coins in this whole mix, right? Well, what is that? Well, what do they pay to? They pay to the dollar. So it doesn't compete, it just pegs back to the dollar anyway. I think they run side by side, and I think there's huge money to be made, by the way. Also, it's simply just, one thing I just last before we go here, and we have a moment running over here, is it just the ability to stake your crypto, your stable coins, get interest. There's great protocols out there right now. There's something called Anchor, there's others out there you should look at, where you can get interest about 20% on your money, which is much, much higher. It's very, very relatively safe, so to speak. All right, with that, guys, I'm out of time here. I'd love to keep going. I'll talk all day. I love this shit, right? Um, remember, just be careful, all right? Don't just buy. Just don't stop buying at the top of this shit. Be smart. If you're going to buy crypto, buy the big stuff and just hold it and the time to the heavy lifting. Speculate by getting involved in these earlier stage deals. I promise you, if you do that, you're going to end up so much better off. Okay, just, just trust me on that. You can have so much better. And you can also, with a little bit of luck, make a fucking shitload. I mean, a shitload of money. Because when one of these deals takes off, when you get into a C fair or even a Series A, okay, it's still very cheap. One of them takes off, you can take off a $10,000 or $100,000 investment and turn it into $10 million. That's not even a bad You can get even more. That's how powerful it can be. And almost everyone will eventually even become a little bit. All right. Thank you. All right. Love you guys. 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 Love